Thank you for visiting our channel. Today I came out to review and also quick unbox this nice looking Android stick. It is done by a company called Buzz TV and it is modeled VidStick Max. Yes, this is limited edition VidStick and I want to mention that this comes with OS 9, it comes with 4 GB of DDR4 RAM and also comes with 128 GB internal storage and more. So just watch this video to learn about it. I do not want to forget if you haven't subscribed to our channel click the click the subscribe button make sure you share this with your friends and family and make sure you click the notification icon select all in order to get notified once we have a new video out if you have a question drop them at the bottom of the video we love to help you out asap and don't forget to click the click the like button that really motivates us to make these type of videos quickly with a little more detail every time so you can see that the box is really nicely designed has a lot of markings around it especially in the bag it talks about everything that we just mentioned and once we slowly open the top, take everything out one by one. Here are all the components that are part of this box. It comes with this user manual. It comes with three of these packages and we will go to them one by one. So the first one is for extension and IR extender and cables and inside of it you have the HDMI extender also comes with this IR extender and we will cover that in the video too and a power connection now this power connector is a little bit different than the ones that we got before you can see the part that will connect to the avid stick itself now that will be split and going into the IR sensor so it goes to the power and on the other side of it is just USB 2.0 connection. Now the second box that we got is the remote control and velvet traveling bag. Let's get that out right now. In that you're also going to get your AAA batteries and this are done by Energizer which is really good quality. Here's the remote we will cover in a few seconds and then the traveling bag. So now anywhere you go you can put your dongle, power and also the remote inside of this and you can take it anywhere you want. So here is the BT200. It is total different designed remote. Now going to the back part of it is you have all the instructions set up. On the top part of it you have the IR sensor. Now going to the front part and the way that they have designed the navigation key. Again this is very very different design. I really like that. So just to compare this with the old one. Here's the BT100. Now going from the top you can see some of the buttons that has been changed. Now also when you go to your TV now you have volume control which the old one did not have. Something like the air mouse was on the top. Now it is sitting in between which has two extra keys here as you can see. And also when you go on down you have most of the buttons are the same. Now going on the bottom part of it this laser cut just had the little white parts that was going to light up. But with a new one the actual colors are going to light up which we will show you in a few seconds. So here's the remote backlit test. Now with the old one you had about 10 seconds for the light to be on and this one it's less than that. So it's about 3 seconds. You can see all the lights are lit and it's just laser cut it inside. You can see how fast it just turned off. And here is the best part. The bottom part now is just lit up when you press any button just inside of it. So you know exactly which one or which color you need to press in the very pitch dark room. Now the next box that we have received is the power supply. So let's just open that up too. Now you have to remember that this one is max. So with the max you receive some other head parts which is going to be able to connect around the world. So you do not have to buy another power supply and that's why these guys brought up this type of power supply that is going to be detachable and not directly connected to the actual box and here how it has been really designed. This is 5 volt 2 amps but this will go to 10 watt and on top of that this is going from 100 to 240 volt. That means it will work anywhere around the world. The best part is that when you open this part it becomes really good for Canada United States. You have to close it, use one of the other ones and you have to just slide it in and you're done. Now you will be able to use it around the world and that's it. Now in order to get this back out you have to put a little force and it will come out very easily. Now same thing with the one that is made for Asia and there you go that's how it really looks and then when you want to take it out easily just comes out. So here is the big moment. The actual Vidstick Max. This is how it looks. Now it is very identical with the old ones. 
but I will show you some little differences. As you can see, there are some holes on the top for ventilation, and then you have their logo really nicely embedded. And then going on one side of it, you have one TF card reader, which can read up to 128 gigabyte. Going on the bottom part of it, which is upside down right now, you have a little sticker that will tell you this is Vitstick Max. You have your serial number, MAC address right there. And then when you flip it on the other side, you just have the reset little button. And then you have the DC connection, which you're going to be able to power it up. Now, if you really pay attention right over here, you have the little LED light. Go to the back part of it. You have one USB 3.0 port, but going on the top part of it is the HDMI connector. So here are some little differences that they brought from the older version to this. Now I have my regular VidStick. Now this is the really old version. This is the first two gigabyte version that they brought out. Now, if you pay attention to this, there are some little differences. Now let's take them side by side and then let's compare them. So if you go on one side with the new one, you have one TF card reader, but with the old one, you didn't have anything. Also, if you really pay attention with the old one, you have, you have some ventilation holes right here and also in the bottom. Now with the new one, you do not have it in the bottom. So that's not the only thing. If you want to flip it on the other side, you will be able to see that with the new one, you just have the reset key and then the power. With the old one, you have TF card reader was that side, your power line, which is the same right here. You have your reset key and also you have the IR sensor on this. Now with the new one, the IR sensor is part of your power connector, which is a lot better this way. And then this way you can connect it and it will be a little bit longer. So if you want to hook it up in front of your TV, you can do that. So going back to this, now if you go in the front, the HDMI is upside down with the new one, with the old one was different. And then one more thing that I want to mention is with the new one, you have the name properly written. And with the old one, it just say SD4000. These are the little differences, but you can see there are some holes here for ventilation. This is the old one, and this is the new one that you can see that there's no holes for ventilation. But I really like this design because now you have it a lot solid, and you can see the cut comes down and goes to the front part, and you have this little sticker, which is, means good for the warranty itself. Now let's go next and connect this to your TV, and there's two ways to do it. So when you turn it on for very first time, this is what you should see. The actual logo and it does say Buzz TV stick. And yes, there's no sound to it and it will just go in to the main screen. All right, so as soon as you hook it up, this is what you should see as the main launcher. So you have their logo on the top and then you have the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Ethernet, and also time and date. This is the main part that it should show up. So you see there's a shortcut for Live TV, VOD, PVR, and EPG. We will cover it in a couple of seconds. And if you are running your server, you should see a picture in picture for that channel that you're running, except that you have all apps, you can click on it. And this is all the apps that are inside of it, but some of them we installed to play with it. On top of that, you have the App Store, which is the Aptoid. And I wanna mention that these boxes and also specifically Vidstick Max is compatible to Google Play Store. And go on next, these are just shortcuts. And yes, you can move them just like this one I'm gonna click on. And then you can see that you can move it or you can remove shortcut or you can even uninstall and we will leave it right here and once you press ok it just stays or you can add more icons to this so something like right now I'm just going to add this one and I will say ok yes we want to add it and now it shows up on your main screen and yes this list is unlimited you can add as many things as possible now there are two other functions that we added this is connected to your live TV is called favorite for your channels and also for VOD. Now same thing goes for your list of your favorites. You can add as many as possible and also if you want to move them from one to another you can click on here and it will be able to move from one location to another which is a beautiful thing to do. Now going down you have this part which is VOD. Now for video on demand you can do the same thing just click on it and you will be able to move it first one on the list or last one on the list your choice of where you want to drop this so when you press ok it just stays there. 
and this is settings so in here you get more access it's something like you can go and check your apps except that you can go down to your device preferences so you can do more right here you can go to about and this way you can see that this is vidstick plus max the os that we're running on this os 9 we will cover all of these in a few seconds and more you also now the next part is the connection to the wi-fi you can click on it and this is where you will be able to go in and select your wi-fi and connect now because this is a dongle it doesn't really mean that you just tie to wi-fi now bus tv do have their own dongle so you can connect it to lan now it will give you a gigabit lan so that way you can get a really good speed i had it connected a few minutes ago you saw that this was lit and now it is not because it's not connected anymore it connected to wi-fi only but this is where you see it the next part is the update so you can go here and if there is any update available you can click on it and it will go through to check it for you mine is on the latest one and this is the version you usually see it has a date there that's how easy it is to check exactly what date they have another part is buzz utilities now this is very very big now if you do want me to cover this we will make another video in order to submit it and that way you can have more options on how this is possible one thing i want to cover in this video will be your home screen and this is where you go for you to change your launcher now remember your main launcher is this one so you have picture in picture. A lot of people misses that old launcher, which was from the 3000. Now they had named it from the start called classic. So when you go to it, here you go. This is how it looks and you will be able to play with it. Now that's the only thing, go to settings and then you can see the setting is even the same as before. And now you will be able to go to buzz utility and then you can go back to home screen and you can change it to media player. That's another really cool launcher. A lot of people like it to be very simple and just bunch of icons and that's it this is where you will be able to create that that's not only thing another thing that they have done is you can add different folders so this way you have a different list for each things that you're looking for easily done and also you can add an icon and this is how easy it is to grab one of these files something like this one and press yes to it and press back and it shows up for you that's how easy it is to submit now the search is on the top and also your setting as i'm selecting right now and we will go back into buzz utility and to home screen so that way we can switch it to another one which is called media 2 player when you go to it this is how easy it is to set up and very very simple you can click here you can add and you can just add a icon there and once you press back it shows up right over here that's how easy it is to process this too another thing is if you want to go to settings you just have to go towards the right and settings will come up you can go back to buzz utility and you will be able to present it back on the same list and then you can select your modern so you can go back to the main screen beautiful and how easy it is to submit now this is part of buzz utility now when you go to 4900 total different ball game so we're not going to cover that part and if again if you need this please ask at the bottom of the video we will make another video the next thing we will go to is going to be some benchmarks so it will be very very quick so just stay tuned and just watch the first thing we're going to go to is geekbench 5 now we already run this so i will go into history and select for multi-core, we received 410, and for single core, we received 126. The next thing that we're going to launch is going to be root checker. Now we have already run this, so you can see that it says that this box is partially rooted. The next part is the DRM check. Again, you can see everything is set up properly. Even the Google version is there. The DHCP level is none. And also the level supported is none. That means a something like Netflix will not run on this with HD, but the regular version that they have installed already will work like charm, but you require to have a air mouse remote. The next thing is AIDA64. Here's the best part. This will give you a lot of raw info inside out. So you can see the manufacturers there. Also the model number is written properly and the hardware, everything is there. The gigabyte on this is four gigabyte of RAM. The internal storage on this is 128 gigabyte. And you can see how much is available. The Bluetooth on this is four plus. Now going into CPU itself, it is running ARM Cortex A53, which is running on maximum. 1800 megahertz 
it is built on 64-bit ARM, but the software is running on 32-bit. Going down, you have all the four cores. Here you go. You can see that it is less than a thousand. It does not go over a thousand. That's why it is so cool. You can see over here that the CPU is running roughly about 57. It doesn't go over and the governor is interactive. The GPU on this is Moly G31, which is single core, but it will do the job for you perfectly when you want to watch something on the screen. The OpenGL on this is 3.2. That means is playing video game is looks flawless. Now network on this is 5G network. You can see all of the part there. You can see five band is supported and going down has more information. But I want to mention that this unit itself is compatible to hook up a USB dongle to it to connect to LAN and it will work perfectly. Now it is running Android OS 9 Pi. API level is 28. Going down, you can see the rooted device says no. Here is a little more information. You can see it says SOC terminal. That is the actual CPU. It is roughly running about 50% or 50 Celsius. And then going under DDR, that means is RAM is same thing. But when it comes to an actual battery or where the power connects, it is very low, which is perfect. That's what we really want. Now, if we go to Kodak's, this thing will run everything perfectly. You can see there's a VP8, also H263 is there. Going up, you can see VP9 is there. And a little more going up, there is more Kodak's in it that you're looking for. The next thing we're going to test is going to be YouTube. Now under quality, you can see it automatically that it plays it on 2K, which is 1440p, but you can switch it to 4K video. And then that way you will be able to see that it does play it on 4K flawless. As I'm showing you right now, it is really cool the way that it shows. That's not only thing, let's show some little geeky info. Now here is some really more geeky information. So you can see that it is right now we're capturing it on 1080p, but this one is running on 4K and 24 hertz so it's not going up but there's no frame drop that's the beautiful part another thing is the actual codec that is using to produce this picture on the screen is vp09 and there's these other versions that are running with it in order to make it more smooth and beautiful and again till now i have no frame drop that's the best part about youtube on this unit itself it works flawless on 4k now the next thing we're going to capture is going to be not if it is going to play it flawlessly or you're going to have problems. So we're going to use VLC player. So we have some files that are on the network and we are connected right now with 5G network. So let's go first and show you that I am connected as 5G. So we go into Wi-Fi and you will see that we are connected as 5G on our network. And then the next thing we will go back to our VLC player and we are inside of one of our folders on the file. So let's go through and play the Samsung file that we have that is 4K and 10 bit. And let's see how clear it will show and how fast it will play it for us. So you can see that it is not that bad. I have to bring the volume down a little bit so that way we can make this video properly. There you go. So yes, there's no stop to it. This is passing the 10 bit color. All right, so the next thing we're going to test is going to be the 1080p video. They should not have any kind of a stoppage with this. I'm just gonna bring down the volume a little more because the sound is too high. And you can see that it plays it flawlessly for you. So it's really nicely done using VLC player to play these. The next thing, how can I get rid of it? It's very easy. Use your remote and press the stop button and it will just totally log you out. So the next thing we're going to cover, which is the last part, I always leave this for the last, is speed test. Now here's the best part. When we connect it via LAN, yes, you can connect this with LAN connection through the USB 3.0. Now Buzz TV have their own version of the dongle which will connect up to a gigabit. Here's one thing that even when they try to get a little bit higher number, I only received 271 for the download and 31.4 for the upload. 
and it is the ping is very low and you can see that when we are trying to download it just went up from the bottom up and it stayed very steady going all the way across there's a little bit of a gap right here and there that it dipped down to 200 then went back to 70. now when we are trying to do an upload our upload rate maximize is 32 so you can see that we got about 31.4 which is a really good and you can see it arced up and it stayed the same so there's not much of a dip you can see it right here and there that it went down a little bit but it was really good now when we did it one more time just to see how much it will come down it went up a little bit and it got even better now when we did for a second time on the upload rate it came down a little bit from 31.4 to 30.6 and there's not money dips going all the way across and our ping went up a little bit now when we connect it to our mesh network yes not 2.4 not 5 but mesh network so this way the router takes advantage of the part to see if you are able to pull 5g network or it's just going to think that you need a 2.4 then it will drop you on 2.4 so you can see that my number was over 100 so i was 115 for the first time and my upload rate was 27.7 and you can see that for the download it was up and down it went almost to 120 then it dropped down back to 115 at the end when we did our upload it just steady state on 26 and 27 and you can see that the way all the way went through our ping was a little bit higher now when we did it the last time again same network we were dipping up and down to 116 and 117 and then it just stabilized on 126 and some parts around here we saw 131 which was really good and then when we did the upload it just stayed steady and it came down a little bit it was about 30 it came down to 27.6 so again 2.4 in 2021 is very very old and i do not want anybody to connect to it remember 5g network is a little bit smaller but 2.4 nowadays is very very small area so because of their bringing wi-fi 6 and wi-fi 6e is a lot better and backward compatible is stick to the mesh network so this way when i do the upgrade on your routers you can get a better resolution and stay off of 2.4 because it's only single band and you're going to have a lot of disconnections in 2021 now when it comes to an actual game it plays it very nicely and you can see that when you're going through there is no stop to it what i really like is that there it looks like it's using lower part of the ram and it's not using the full part of the ram i know that this is low powered ram that is used in this and it is ddr4 but it doesn't seem like it's using the full potential of four gigabyte of ram when you are playing this game it's pretty cool because it's not using everything and yes it's kind of hard to control this and also talk about it because you have to put your mind into words and also play this this is pretty cool you can see that so this was our take on the bus tv vidstick plus max which is limited edition all the links will be available in the bottom so where you can get one and also if you need more help links are all going to be in the bottom if you have any questions any suggestions please bring them at the bottom of the video i hope you guys like our video if you do like it click the click the like button subscribe button on the top comment in the bottom always remember to visit our own website which is xitex.info like us on facebook follow us on twitter instagram and other social networking places and thank you